It's the Suzuki Challenge Series Swift Cup once again at Bushy Park. I'm Vic Fernandes, and today it's overcast, it's rainy, it's wet, and who knows, it may be wild too as well. Man and machine will be tested to the limit today at Bushy Park. Big crowd, lots of excitement in store right here at Bushy Park. Round four of the Swift Cup here at the Williams Industries Digicel International Race Meeting, which also features the uh, Caribbean Motor Racing Championship. But a roundup of what's happened so far. In round one, while Trinidad and Tobago's Ryan Perot won the middle race, Mark Thompson of Barbados won the other two in an action-packed day. There's Perot. And it was Mark Thompson, however, who came out in the Team Rock Hard Cement Swift as the top scorer of the weekend. In round two, from his first pole position of the season, Ryan Perot won the opening race. And uh, again, it was an action-packed day. He was delighted with his performance. Ryan Wood joined the uh, Swift Cup winners list, delighted with that. Perot picked up the third race of the day and ended up not only top scorer of the day, but also the new championship leader. In round three, Perot started from pole again, won the opening race, his fourth win so far. Barry Gale won the second race, becoming the fourth winner. But it was David Summerbell Jr. of Jamaica who won the uh, third race of the day and was top scorer. After three rounds, Ryan Perot leads by 39 points from Mark Thompson with Daryl Clark and Ryan Wood third and fourth, Josh Reed and David Summerbell fifth and sixth. The rest of the table all line up behind them. It's an exciting season already and there have been so far 14 drivers who've scored points. And new for this weekend is the Joker lap. Ryan Wood explains how it works. <laughs> This came about from Global Rally Cross, which was done here. We were speaking about it during the Suzuki Swift Series, and it's a way of just spicing up the race for the spectators as well as for the drivers. Um, it's an alternative to the actual course you usually take. Each driver has to take this joker lap once, and it's not allowed to be taken on the first lap, but it actually spices up the whole race, depending on the situation in the race. If you are, let's say, fighting in the front runners, for argument's sake, and you are at the back of those front runners, you can take the joker lap and get yourself into some clean air as you enter back onto the track and you can put in some fast laps and when the other guys have to take their joker lap, being that they're fighting in positions, they slow themselves down. But it can also work to your disadvantage whereas you might take the joker lap early and the other guys might be putting in some hot laps and when they do take the joker lap, they might come out ahead of you. It calls for a lot of strategy and you have to be aware of what's actually going on around you in the actual race itself. Hi, and this is the Suzuki Challenge Series, and we'll be right back. The Suzuki Challenge Series Swift Cup continues right here. Park. Ryan Perot has his second consecutive pole position. Kenrick Husband's alongside him on the front row. Josh Reed, Jason Parkinson on row two. Those three all achieving their best qualifying so far. Sam Summerbell of Jamaica joins the championship down towards the tail end of the grid. So quite appalling weather conditions for the first Swift Cup race of the day. It's been raining very heavily. The track is still very wet. It is going to test these drivers significantly. Ryan Perot starts from pole and moves into the lead already. Chased by Snapper Husbands, David Summerbell Jr. Good start from him. Jason Parkinson and Josh Reed all there in the mix as well. Standing water on one or two of the corners. That's at Shack Shack as we see them splashing through uh, alongside the curb there. Sam Summerbell of uh, Jamaica at the uh, back of the field at the moment. Her first race in the Swift Cup and the first time she has raced in the same type of car against her father. 
David Somerville. We're in car with David now in third place at the moment behind Snapper Husbands. And you just get a glimpse there of how difficult the visibility is. Windscreen wipers uh, working on all the cars. But of course, the same tyres used in this race as are normally used because the DMAC tyre, uh, the compound that is used, is uh, very much a hybrid and works both on damp and dry surfaces. As the race moves on, Ryan Perot edging ever further ahead of the field. Remember, the joker lap comes into play for the first time, not to be used on lap one, but can be used on any lap thereafter. This is the first time the drivers have ever had to do it. Add in the uh, damp conditions, and it's a really tricky race. Some very good car control being displayed by pretty much everybody. We haven't seen uh, much of the sort of contact that we saw last time round. And so Mark Thompson, it is second in the championship, chasing Snapper Husbands. They're the first to go over the uh, GRC Rallycross Bridge and take the uh, Joker lap. They rejoin a couple of places each down the field from where they were. But of course, it all balances itself out as everybody else takes the joker laps in the uh, second half of the race. Perot still leads, uh, David Samabel is now second, Parkey and Josh Reader third and fourth leading the rest of the field in the new livery for his team Digicel car, Daryl Clark. A much darker livery uh, mirroring what the uh, Digicel uh, current campaigns are and a challenge for the lead from David Somerville Jr coming out of the MQI bullet he gets alongside uh, Perot as in the background Jason Parkinson and uh, Daryl Clark both take the joker lap and uh, David Somerville dives up the inside at the C-Sash hairpin is he going to still be ahead as they come up to Cockspur Cyclone and indeed he is so David Somerville as we reach half distance takes the advantage a couple of laps later, he hasn't pulled out too much of a gap between himself and uh, Ryan Perot, but he is in there in the lead. Perot is second, Josh Reed is now third, Jason Parkinson fourth, Mark Thompson, having taken his uh, joker lap early, is in fifth place and looking well placed. As in the background, we see Carol Clark looking as though he was spinning off onto the uh, cart track, the uh, customer cart track, and yes, he is. We see it in car with him. Back to the uh, front runners, and uh, David Somerville is uh, taking the joker this time round over the car, the, the uh, bridge he goes. Now he rejoins, coming down into the banks. Uh, S is, and he's going to be alongside. He's taken the joker. Not only has he taken the joker, but he's come out back in the lead. Perot has yet to take his joker, and so it looks as though David Somerville Jr. has rather nailed this joker concept in his very first attempt at it. Just look at how difficult it is for uh, Mark Thompson there to see through the windscreen of his uh, Swift Sport. Down into the hammer they go. David Somerville running a little bit wide. It looks as though he's going to lose uh, what is now second place to uh, Mark Thompson. Uh, Perot now back into the lead, being chased hard now by Thompson. They go through Paddock and along the front of the uh, Automotive Art Pit Complex. A challenge for fourth place there. The side by side, Josh Reed and Jason Parkinson. Josh on the inside pushes Parkinson to the outside of the track. They're side by side, couple of wheels over the curb there for Parkey. He loses that place for the moment. Very, very... Uh, tightly bunched they are lap times of course significantly slower than they normally are and up to take the joker goes ryan perot but he go he's turned his suzuki swift cup car into a lawnmower he got that wrong what happened did he just hit there's a bit of water there yes he just hit the water couldn't take the turn properly ends up on the grass that'll cost him dear so towards the uh, Eighth lap now, we're on lap seven. Mark Thompson now with a very comfortable advantage indeed. And he very nearly loses it. Makes it look like a rear-wheel drive Mark II Ford Escort there. Neat bit of car control. Same thing happens to David Somerville Jr. as well. But he gathers it all back together. Although, having said that, he's lost himself a handful of places. And he seems to be dropping ever further down the field. Clearly, some problem there has developed for Somerville because he's gone from... Uh, hero to zero so to speak in the space of uh, uh, just a lap or so so mark thompson it is who leads up into uh, the dipper emerges from the bullet still with the advantage and it is jason parkinson in second place snapper husbands is third fourth is uh, woody fifth uh, ryan wood fifth is josh reed quite a gap back before the rest of the field led towards the line by in sixth place kurt thompson but the first checkered flag of the day for mark thompson he will be delighted with that, his third win in the championship, and his first 
since the opening round way back in March. Jason Parkinson's second place is his best result of the season so far. Snapper Husbands is back up the front in third. Ryan Wood, Josh Reed, and Kurt Thompson complete the top six. And in the second half of the field, Barry Gale is seventh. Paul Bourne scores his first points of the season. That race was awesome. That race started in eighth, and from there, it was just about tactics and trying to get to the front, obviously, as clean as they could have. On top of it all, it could have been done without these guys um, preparing these cars from Simpson Motors, Brett Judd, all of his crew. It would never have been done without them. And lastly, without rock hard cement, it would not have been done either. That is the machine, that is the cement. Keep it with that way, work hard, rock hard. I was in the race most of the time. Um, I had a good battle with David Somerville. Uh, he ended up passing me on the hairpin, um, the bottom end, and then. I tried to take the Joker on the last lap. Problem was, when I turned into the Joker, they had so much water were flowing, the car on the set straight off the track. So, I ended up going off, so they went somewhere to do something. I mean, that's how life is. Conditions are wet, conditions are hot, but ladies and gentlemen, we need to take a break, and we'll be right back. Nice car. When are you going to let me drive it? One condition. I love this song. Turn it up. Is that better? I think you're missing something. Is that better, sir? I think we might be late. Better step on it. You go park the car. It's time to rumble once again, ladies and gentlemen. The checkered flag will be out soon as we head back to motor racing here at Bushy Park. So grid for race two, the reverse of the results of race one. Sam Summerbell and Ryan Perot on the front row. Daryl Clark, David Summerbell on row two. Paul Bourne, Barry Gale on row three. Kurt Thompson, Josh Reed on row four. Woody, Kenrick Husbands and uh, the rest of the field line up behind. And away they go. So a good start there uh, by Ryan Perot from uh, the outside of the front row of the grid. Snatches the lead from oh, David Summerbell. Very nearly tipped into a spin there by Daryl Clark. Clark in third. Fourth is uh, Barry Gale. Uh, Sam Somerville holding on well in fifth place at the moment in her first experience racing these uh, Swift Cups and uh, holding uh, her head up better than uh, some of the fellows have done on uh, the reverse grid first lap or so. But it's Perot who is uh, laying down his marker early in this race. Daryl Clark noses alongside David Somerville who runs very wide. Incidentally, a gear linkage uh, difficulty was why he dropped towards the uh, tail end of the field. A small issue with the car sorted out by the mechanics between races but that explains his uh, uh, sudden uh, disappearance from the front of the field. <laughs> a little bit of a love tap there between Mark Thompson and uh, Josh Reed. No damage done and uh, both still pointing in the right direction. As you can see, the uh, poor weather conditions of the earlier part of the day have uh, uh, prevailed. Well, they haven't actually. It's been on and off. Oh, and Sam Summerbell has gone off there at the hammer. Uh, sort of outbreaked herself, I think, off into the gravel trap. She should be able to recover from that and rejoin. So for Trinidad, it's Ryan Perot. For Jamaica, it is David Somerville Jr. leading the home team at the moment in third place. Daryl Clark chased by Barry Gale. And then Paul Bourne uh, running well at the moment there in uh, fifth place. Sixth is Josh Reed in car with Ryan Perot looking back at uh, David Somerville Jr. Now remember the Joker lap, who is going to go early, who is going to go late. Ryan Perot went late last time and he's going early this time and uh, he's chased up over the uh, GRC bridge uh, by uh, Daryl Clark and also Paul Bourne there uh, as well, each of them joining a couple of places uh, further down the field than uh, they were. Paul Bourne there joining in between uh, Jason Parkinson and uh, Ryan Wood. Now, I wonder whether that would have been viewed as a Joker blend violation. I'm not sure whether he was quite where he should have been uh, on the road, but we'll check that out a little bit later on. Mid-distance now, and uh, still action right the way down through the field. Uh, Daryl Clark there in third place battling uh, as they turn into the hammer. He clips the curbs. <laughs> Mark Thompson does that amazing rally-style scandy 
in uh, his uh, Swift again, uh, lying down there in sixth place at the moment. Still very, very bunched up. These tricky weather conditions uh, have certainly made for some uh, superb uh, Swift Cup racing here at Bushy Park Barbados today. Oh, and uh, Woody in the Digicel car, the traditional uh, Digicel livery there, uh, dives out alongside and uh, passes Paul Bourne. We're looking out of the rear window there briefly of Woody's car. Jason Parkinson taking the uh, joker on uh, this fourth lap, as indeed behind him is Kurt Thompson, lap record holder for the Swift Cup. Uh, he's held the fastest lap after each of the opening three race beats. Terrific battle for uh, fourth place there with uh, oh dear Ryan Wood. We're watching from inside Ryan's car. Best spectator seat in the house for that battle ahead of him between Josh Reed and uh, Mark Thompson, which Woody now joins in. So it's a three car battle now. Woody alongside Josh Reed as they uh, come onto the straight in front of the Automotive Art Pits Complex. Uh, Paul Bourne is fighting back to be part of that battle as well. <laughs> the wipers are doing their best but uh, vision is uh, not absolutely ideal. Of course the position of the camera not quite in the same position as the eyes of the driver hence it's a little bit more uh, difficult to see through the screen everybody's slipping and sliding around the two kilometers of uh, uh, bushy park no major incidents in this race uh, so far Woody really having a look to see whether he can get along the outside approaching the w's of uh, mark thompson it's not going to be able to succeed in doing that but can he get a tighter line on the exit yes he can side by side they are there uh, mark thompson pushed a little bit wide two wheels into the uh, mile over the curb and so uh, woody oh, a little bit of contact there as we see it from inside uh, woody's car uh, and ryan wood it is who takes the place and we see him ahead of that group coming up towards the dipper on this six lap out of eight through the dipper and out of the MQI bullet are we going to see anyone uh, taking the uh, joker this time round there is the uh, Ryan Perot team Suzuki entry Barry Gale behind him and there's uh, and again we see an amazing slide there from Mark Thompson who clearly has his car set up a little bit differently to everyone else on to the last lap and David Somerville Jr. has not taken his joker yet so he's got to do it this time otherwise there's a penalty to be paid for missing out the joker lap couple of seconds two and a half seconds or so the gap back to the man in second place which is uh, uh, Ryan Perot over the uh, bridge goes David Summerbell and he rejoins comfortably ahead a couple of lengths of Ryan Perot so David Summerbell again goes late it was lap six last time this time it's the final lap and this time it's going to work because it's going to be David Summerbell Jr. taking the checkered flag for his second win in the Suzuki Challenge Series Swift Cup. A checkered flag lap of honour for David Somerbell with uh, Ryan Perot second, Barry Gale third, Darrell Clark fourth, Ryan Wood and Mark Thompson completing the top six. So Perot finishes where he started the race after his problems in race one. Josh Reed, Jason Parkinson, snapper husbands Kurt Thompson, Paul Bourne and Samantha Somerbell complete the field. Again, I got a good race, I was going with Ryan um, and he's quicker than me, he's really the man to, to, to beat here. And coming up, you know, we, he, I saw him take the joker and I then tried everything, stretch him, stretch him as much as I can. And he was there pulling me a little bit and come up to the last joker. I'm saying, oh man, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And I came out a little ahead of him and held on to the, flag, to the checkered flag. It was awesome. I started on the second place on the grid because unfortunately I didn't finish 11th in the first race. So they reversed the grid. Um, and I maintained that spot. I came second overall. Uh, I finally got the joker right. <laughs> Did not slide off the road. It's, it's a driver's conditions. It's all up to the driver. Uh, David Somerville is uh, doing very well today. But I have one or two little tweaks I want to do with my car too as well right now. So I think I'll be able to fix that problem. So. World-class motor racing, world-class drivers, man and machine. Coming right back. Happy Fun never ends in the family room. The new Suzuki Erdiga. It's much more than a car. 
Suzuki Way of Life. They've come from Jamaica, they've come from all over the Caribbean, from Guyana, from St. Vincent, and of course from Barbados. It's motor race in action like you've never seen before. You park right now. And at least one of them's finally found some sunshine. Grid for the final race of the day based on points, Mark Thompson and Summerbell up front, and Paul Bourne and Samantha Summerbell down at the tail end of the field. So, with a dry track at last, everybody will be pleased about that except Ryan Wood, who set the fastest lap in both of the wet races earlier in the day. Good start for Mark Thompson, David Summerbell Jr., uh, Jason Parkinson up there with them uh, as well, and we ride in car with Jason there briefly heading down towards uh, Shack Shack. Remember, the joker lap to be taken on anyone other than the opening lap. So they have seven chances to dive up and over the uh, Red Bull Global Rallycross Bridge. So Thompson not getting away from Summerbell. Parkey tacked on to that uh, leading pair. Side by side, Daryl Clark and Barry Gale battling for fourth place as they exit the uh, W's uphill uh, over Mill Brow. Lots of others trying to join in there as well. Uh, Ryan Perot uh, having had a rather lower points haul than normal, having not failed to score in the opening race of the day. He's midfield rather than up the front, but he's making his way there side by side uh, towards the end of this opening lap and getting past Barry Gale. So already Ryan Perot up in to fifth place. So the field breaking up uh, a little bit. The uh, leading runners eking out an advantage even in the uh, early stages, uh, not yet at mid-distance. So Mark Thompson, David Summerbell, Jason Parkinson, Ryan Perot, gap back, then Barry Gale uh, and Josh Reed in car with uh, Snapper Husbands having a battle with uh, Ryan Wood through the right and left flick of uh, the paddock turn onto the uh, pit straight. Back with uh, race leader Mark Thompson, David Summerbell and Jason Parkinson. Brian Perot literally nose to tail, a 16-wheeler. That would look rather good, a sort of stretched limo type swift sport. Onto the joker lap goes uh, Ryan Perot and ahead of him Mark Thompson. They were first and fourth when they headed over the bridge. They rejoin in uh, fifth and sixth places and uh, still therefore in the leading group. Barry Gale now up to third behind these two men, the Simpson uh, finance entry of David Summerbell Jr. and the infra rentals car of Jason Parkinson. A gap of a second or so back to third place, Gary Gale. Fourth is Mark Thompson. Fifth is Ryan Perot. They've each made up a decent place uh, since rejoining. Sixth is Sarah Clark. Seventh is his Team Digicel teammate, Ryan Wood. We're now just after half distance on lap five. So is uh, Summerbell going to dive off onto the Joker? No, he's gone straight past the approach to the bridge. What about Parkinson? Uh, is he tucked in behind him still? Yes, he is. It's Barry Gale this time who uh, takes the uh, Joker, as does uh, Daryl Clark. Barry Gale took the Joker in third place, rejoins uh, down in uh, fifth. So still on this final lap then, it's got to be Summerbell to go for the Joker and Parkinson as well of course because he uh, hasn't been either down through the W's they go still just some remnants of uh, standing water visible here and there uh, at uh, Bushy Park but the drainage has worked incredibly well bearing in mind the weather that we have experienced during the uh, day so there is uh, Summerbell uh, exiting the bullet Parkinson is behind him he was second in the opening race of the day that was his best result and we dive on to the Joker through that chicane just to slow the speed a little bit as they go over the bridge and then uh, tight on the exit They've got to stay over to the right-hand side uh, of the road if there are other cars around. And there aren't because not only this time has Summerbell uh, gone over in the lead and come back out in the lead. Parking tucked in behind him as well, is there in second place. And so, remarkable thinking, good use of the Joker lap. And the final race of the day is won by David Summerbell Jr. His third win in the Suzuki Challenge Series Swift Cup. And he carries with him onto the podium a second, second place of the day for Jason Parkinson. Mark Thompson maintains his championship challenge in third. Ryan Perot, the championship leader, still in fourth place. Daryl Clark 
and Barry Gale complete the top six. Barry, of course, also a winner earlier in the season. Josh Reed, Ryan Woodcut, Thompson, Snapper Husbands uh, are the remaining scorers. Paul Bourne and Sam Somerville, unfortunately, not scoring. So, after round four, Ryan Perez' championship lead reduced to 21 points by Mark Thompson. David Somerville has leapt up into third place, 21 points behind Thompson, and is going to be a very interesting battle in the final round of the championship coming up in October. It's been a fabulous day, it ended fabulously. My family's here, my mom's here, my son, Samantha in the race. What a lovely day and to win at the end, perfect. So I'm just on top of the world right now. It was a good day, yeah, uh, challenging. It was wet, so it was a toss of a dice, but consistency paid off today. Just now in that race, David and I kicked, saved it to the last lap. And I was just, what I was kept looking at third place, seeing how far they were behind, wondering, are we gonna make it? And I said, I'm gonna follow him through and shoot the joker lap, man. It worked out this time around, but the joker's a real joke. And it's not only the joker on the track that's a real joker, the international prize giving in the clubhouse, allowing the uh, competitors to let their hair down. Third on the podium, Jason Parkinson. Second is Mark Thompson, but the day's top scorer David Somerville Jr. receiving his winner's hat from Zoe Manning of Bushy Park Barbados. The Suzuki Challenge Series Swift Cup comes to an end here today at Bushy Park. A day of motor racing like no other. Conditions wet, almost like a field full of slippery bananas. Drivers and machines tested to the max. Great crowd on hand. Lots of conditions that perhaps will test you to the max. And it did. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been another great day of fun-filled excitement at Bushy Park Racetrack.